Hey everybody. Today we're talking about the standard normal distribution. This is just a normal distribution, or bell curve, that has mean zero and standard deviation one, like I have pictured here. Here we're talking about a continuous random variable that can take values between negative infinity and positive infinity, but the bulk of the probability is clustered near zero. The peak is at the center, at the mean, at zero, and the standard deviation of one means that the points of inflection of this graph, where it changes from being hill-shaped to valley-shaped, are going to be at plus and minus one. It's traditional to use the letter Z to refer to um, random variables that have a standard normal distribution. The standard normal distribution is useful because of this fact. If you have any random variable with a normal distribution, say with mean mu and standard deviation sigma, then the new random variable z equals x minus mu over sigma is going to have the standard normal distribution with mean 0 and standard deviation 1. So we can transform any normal distribution into the standard normal. Now, remembering our conversation about z scores, z represents the number of standard deviations by which any value x is above or below the mean. Sometimes we also call z-scores standard scores. If um, z has a standard normal distribution, it's not going to be helpful to ask about probabilities of individual values. There are infinitely many of those. Remember, we're on a continuum from negative infinity to positive infinity. And all of those individual values are going to have essentially zero probability. Instead, we only talk about probabilities that z falls in specific ranges. The way that we consider probabilities in a standard normal distribution is the same as the way we consider probabilities for any continuous probability distribution. We look at areas under the graph over the range that we're interested in. So here I've drawn the probability that z randomly comes out to be between negative 1 and 0.5. We're looking for the shaded area under the graph between those two values. Of course, remember the total, under, the total area under the graph is always going to be 1. That's true for a normal distribution or for any other continuous random variable, because the total probability should be 1. The easiest and most common way to describe probabilities for continuous random variables, including the standard normal, is using um, cumulative distribution functions, or CDFs for short. The CDF gives you the probability that a random variable comes out to be less than or equal to any particular given value. With the standard normal distribution, we use the notation capital Phi of Z for the CDF. Here I've pictured capital Phi of Z, where Z is 0.5. It's going to be that shaded area there we can see that that should be a little more than one half. More than half of the area under this graph is shaded to the left of 0.5. Now, every statistics book will include a table of values for the CDF of the standard normal distribution. But unless your stats professor is extremely old school, you're much better off using technology. Um, a TI calculator will do this using the normal CDF function. Excel will do it. Any um, respectable piece of technology will compute normal CDFs for you. In R, which I use, the command for the standard normal CDF is just p norm, and then you feed it a z value. So, for instance, to find the probability of getting a z score less than or equal to 0.5 at random, we just enter p norm of 0.5. And in this case, we get 0.691. So that shaded area is about 0.691 the probability of getting a z-score less than or equal to 0.5 at random is about 69.1%. More generally, if we want to compute the probability that a z-score falls in a certain range, we start with the probability that z is less than or equal to the upper bound and subtract the probability that it's less than or equal to the lower bound. So, the probability that z is between a and b is the probability that z is less than or equal to b minus the probability that z is less than or equal to a. Or, to say it more succinctly, phi of b minus phi of a. Here's an example. Let's do the probability that negative 2 is less than or equal to z is less than or equal to 0. 
So we're going to want to do phi of the top value minus phi of the lower value, phi of 0 minus phi of negative 2. In R, p norm of 0 minus p norm of negative 2. Here's the command. It gives us 0 0.477. So this probability is about 47.7%. Two useful facts to keep in mind. The probability of any in individual value, any individual z-score, is infinitesimal. So the probability that z is less than or equal to c and the probability that z is less than c are the same. It doesn't matter whether the inequalities inside of the CDF are strict or not. The probability is going to be the same. Secondly, remember that the probability that z is greater than c is equal to 1 minus the probability that z is less than or equal to c. Because z greater than c and z less than or equal to c are complementary events. One of those two things has to happen, and they can't both happen. One final example. Let's do the probability of getting a z-score randomly that is greater than negative 1.5. By the way, I expect this to be a fairly large probability. Um, a negative z-score is going to put me to the left of the mean, fairly far left on this bell curve, and I'm going to be looking at the shaded area to the right of that z-score. I expect it to be well above 50%. So using fact 2 above, I'm going to do 1 minus the probability that z is less than or equal to negative 1.5. Writing my probability statement in terms of a CDF. So it's 1 minus phi of negative 1.5, 1 minus p norm of negative 1.5, or about 93.3%. A lot bigger than 50%, just like I expected.